All right, everybody, today we're going to be doing a second video, and that is going to be over the challenge for the first map, the event. It's going to be the Swamp Curse, which is a challenge where you take 5% of your damage, or eight damage, 5% of your HP every single time you kill one mob, and you heal 3 HP, uh, HP every single time you damage a mob. And so this is kind of turned into, in my opinion, the quickling dodge simulator uh, for lack of better terms honestly and I've even kind of messed myself up a little bit by accidentally taking the entangle first um, relic which spawns these like little blue or green circles on the ground and they deal damage and luckily you know entangle the DPS isn't really anything so it's not like Something I'm really too worried about, but it's something that can screw me up. See, I just... Oh no. Look at all this damage I'm taking from it. So it's just, uh... It's hit or miss sometimes, honestly. And so luckily with the Poxbringer, as you saw right there, the boss isn't too hard. But uh, I'll just go over everything that I've kind of decided to do to make my life simpler, basically. So, uh, first thing, when it comes to the relics, just take whatever you can get. Um, if you're lucky, and never take the boss relic. Um, if you're lucky, and maybe you can get the ascension relic, or the Im immaterial cloak relic, that's pretty good. Um, that'll help you out a lot. And then, what I've also been doing is, whenever I get a chest, I always go for the magnet, because the magnet definitely helps a ton uh in regards to making sure you get these items basically and you you need the experience just occasionally to get you know hp regen things like that and you want to honestly try to not level up too much because in my opinion leveling isn't gonna do see this i don't want this 10 percent chance to instantly kill when first entangled that's that's bad that's how i kill myself uh, critical damage, I don't want that either. You're honestly just like dodging um, specific anything that does damage or kill. Um, but anyways, yeah. So with chess, just make sure you take whatever relic you can. That's not going to impact your damage. Um, if you can get Ascension or Immaterial Cloak, those are going to be fantastic. Ascension gives you 50% movement speed and Immaterial Cloak just makes their uh, cooldown reduction go down for the first relic. So those two are pretty strong. Um, immaterial cloak in regards to weapon skills immaterial cloak is super duper good in this situation ascension like i said is very strong i would get it for the hp regen as well as the you don't really want the sp regen but uh it's not a bad thing to get so the hp regen and sp regen is at level two so you only have to level up to level two so those i would say are not exactly necessary but good um and then i've been grabbing entangle because i think it doesn't deal enough damage for it to be relevant enough to like kill a high number of mobs and it's gonna give you some like small openings you'll notice uh, it's kind of hard to see when it's dark like that but it definitely gives you some openings in regards to movement and basically for me this has been the easiest way for me to get this challenge done and that's just going evasion making sure your character is as small as possible having movement speed and then just getting out of there and so it's a, it's a pretty play intensive clear, you know, you can't just stand around and do nothing, you just have to actually constantly be do uh, dodging the whole time, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, one of the most important things I would recommend though, when you're going for this challenge, is you want to make sure you go in and I reset my upgrades and I took away all of my damage nodes. And I also took away all of my retaliation nodes. Retaliation is what is going to kill you in this game mode. So make sure you do not have any retaliation nodes put in. You never want to take the defense node. You don't want any retaliation because that's that's definitely the quickest way to kind of get yourself killed during this challenge because uh, more mobs are spawning. It might not seem like there's a lot here, but that's just because I run away. And so all the mobs are on the other side of the screen right now. Um, but there's a higher amount of mobs that are spawned during this game mode and so you want to do your best to avoid those and retaliation it's that big aoe circle of damage that's dealt based off how much damage you take and that is going to be extremely extremely impactful on your playthrough so definitely make sure you reset your upgrades 
and you get rid of retaliation and I did damage just to make my life even a little bit easier. So that, that would be my recommendation in regards to that. That's one of the most important things. And then you can just take, uh, honestly, evasion and HP regen are all that you really need. I don't think anything else is that important in my opinion. And then just do your best if you know you're running low on rerolls you can grab the rerolls here that's something i've been doing occasionally and then i use those to just roll down if you're ever getting low on rerolls and you're worried that you're going to run into a situation where you're going to hit you know four weapon skills which is your worst case scenario basically if you feel like you're going to run into that situation definitely make sure you just take any passive that you've seen it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's not the instant kill passive just take a passive it's almost 99.9% .9 of the time better to just take a passive skill instead of a weapon skill in situations like that so I'm never I'm never gonna go past this level because it increases the damage there so just take movement speed movement speed obviously gonna be really important for when you're trying to dodge but yeah just make sure if you don't have rerolls because you're gonna have to run the pox bringer in regards to this and you just do not want to ever hit a weapon skill that's the worst case scenario outside of these three ascension and tangle and immaterial cloak i'll go over like an actual list of everything once we get rid of this last boss that's gonna spawn here we'll see how that goes poxbringer is such a nice boss killing uh heritage it's super super nice when it comes to taking care of any of the bosses so it's really the last thing you need to worry about dodging I guess is kind of important but uh, that's that's about it now in regards to the bosses when they spawn since there are so many more mobs spawning right now I don't really rush myself when it comes to killing the boss if I run into a good situation where I'm gonna be able to get damage on it I will go but if it takes me going through like a hundred mobs to get there, that is like my worst case scenario basically. I don't want to have to go through like that whole hodgepodge of mobs right there because I'm going to end up killing a lot, it's going to do a lot of damage to me, and that is worst case scenario. So just wait until you get into a situation where you're able to, you know, kind of get the boss by itself. If you're going to be playing quickly, which I recommend. You're going to want to just sit on top of the boss as much as you can and then run away because quickling poxbringer is a really good combination for boss killing basically oh that's a lot <laughs> looks like the boss is stuck unfortunately so this might be a hot minute i'll try and grab everything and bring them to me and material cloak makes it a little bit harder honestly So just sit on top of it, run away. You don't need to see the boss HP. It doesn't matter what it is, it'll go down slowly. So I probably only need to hit it one more time for us to take care of him. Should be pretty low. Yeah, it's pretty low. There we go. So that that in my opinion is the easiest way to take care of the swamp challenge. Um so we'll just we'll just go over everything. So in regards to characters. Uh, the quickling is definitely going to be your best bet. Quickling, it has the damage reduction, which is nice, so you take a little bit less damage. It also doesn't do that much damage anymore. There is a patch that reduced the damage of its weapon skill by 75%, and it's still very strong, don't get me wrong, but uh, in regards to this specific challenge, it makes it very, very easy. So, definitely 100% recommend quickling. Uh, in regards to heritage, Honestly, for this challenge, Poxbringer is going to be the, I don't want to say the only, because I'm sure you could do it with other ones, but it's definitely going to be the easiest heritage for you to go. The reason being that you do delayed damage, and so this delayed damage gives you more time to, one, regen HP, and also it lets you hit as many things as possible without dying instantaneously, because the issue with a lot of the other heritages is that you're just dealing that damage immediately. So if something's going to die, it's going to die, you're going to take that damage, like, right away. 
And if you're, you know, playing quickling or any other class and you're walking through mobs because there's a higher mob density on this challenge, you're going to be taking damage from the mobs also. So if you combine that with the damage, the 5% damage you take when you kill a mob, that's just going to be a lot of damage all at the same time. And it doesn't matter what your HP regen is, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. So quickling and Poxbringer, it's definitely the best combination for this challenge. In regards to weapon skills, you're only going to want to go Ascension, Immaterial Cloak, and entangle in regards to entangle i would only put it up to level five you could probably go a little bit lower i might have not read close enough but uh there's only a couple base damage uh additions i guess might be the right word basically entangle gets more damage added to it um uh, but the damage in general it's very low so you don't have to worry about it and entangle is going to give you a couple like just small areas for you to run away when you grab onto a mob it's really nice it gives you more wiggle room you don't have to worry so much. Uh, Immaterial Cloak, I mean, obviously it's fantastic for this because it pushes all the mobs away. Gives you more room to run, gives you more room to dodge. And if you get it to level 5, that's going to pull all of the items. So the HP drops a lot more on this map and during this challenge. So if you have Immaterial Cloak level 5, it's going to grab everything towards you. You don't have to waste your uh, relic chests on the magnets like I did. And it's just a really, really good ability. I would try to get the first relic if you can but it's not really that important it reduces the cooldown by 30 percent, so it's super helpful but it's not going to be game changing uh ascension ascension you only have to get up to level two and that's for the hp regen and sp regen the sp regen not very important you don't really want to be using your ability that often because you're going to be dealing damage when you do that but the 10 hp regen is such a big just bonus in a game mode where you don't really want to level up that much so getting three levels of hp regen in that one level of ascension super worth it and then in regards to passives you're obviously going to want to go evasion evasion is going to be huge here making your character model small is going to help you with dodging and taking less damage in general is always good hp regen is obviously also going to be important because when you're taking damage because you kill a mob you're going to want to regen it as most like as fast as possible even if it's just a little bit so Definitely recommend that. I grabbed study only specifically because I had no other choices. And then movement speed is also going to be pretty huge here. Uh, in regards to relics, the relics you're really looking for are ascension level 1. That increases your movement speed by 50% when ascension is going. And immaterial cloak level 1. And that reduces the cooldown by 30%. Other than that, you don't really want anything. I accidentally got the entangle first relic. I just grabbed it out of reflex. That actually increases the damage, so you don't want that. So those are the two relics I would say to be on the look for. Other than that, just grab literally anything that has nothing to do with the skills you have because you don't want to increase damage, you don't want extra abilities, you don't AoE increased, etc, etc. And then in regards to invocation choices, uh, I picked up the magnet a lot because for the most part, at least in this style of taking care of the challenge, you're just going to be running around a lot. So you don't have a lot of time to pick up the uh, EXP, basically. And so by getting that magnet, it'll give you like a nice push of like five to six levels. And this is really important for the early levels because you want to get your HP regen up. You're trying to find a material cloak, stuff like that. And that's really important. Then the other thing I did was take the 10 rerolls. So since you're playing Poxbringer and you're also not going to be a very high level, you want to take those rerolls when you can because this will help you dig for the weapon skills and the passives that you're looking for. So I highly, highly recommend it. And then just coming down to gameplay and just choices and what you're doing. If you're ever low on rerolls, make sure you just pick up any passive that you see. I would recommend staying away from the instant kill. You definitely do not want that. And then you want to stay away from, in my opinion, the skill size. As long as you stay away from those two, you could pick up literally anything else you want. Crit chance also kind of not something you want. And then the 5% uh, chance to explode. You don't want that. Um, but anything else go for it i mean you could take like crit damage because if you respec your points and you don't have the crit damage um skill in the store you're not going to be having any crit chance basically so you won't deal any crit damage and just make sure you pick those passives that have nothing to do with it because you want to save your rerolls if you can so that when you run into the unfortunate situation where you have four weapon skills on the screen you're not forced into picking one because i i feel like Having a weapon skill in this situation, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely going to impact how much HP you're going to be losing by killing mobs. You're obviously going to kill mobs faster if you're dealing damage, so I would just try and keep it as low as possible. 
And then in regards to the bosses, I would just say don't rush it. Don't be, you know, in a hurry to take care of the bosses. Wait until you have a really good spot where you get to be with the boss alone or just a few mobs are around it. And then just go and stand on top of it when your weapon skill goes and you don't have to worry about it too much. You don't want to force yourself in there and be like, oh, the boss is going to kill me. The boss is on the first maps. Their abilities are very simple and straightforward to dodge. So just go in, deal some damage, and then run away. Just wait. You don't have to force yourself because if you're using your weapon skill through so many mobs, you're going to end up killing a couple. And that's going to take... A lot of your HP away and if you're unfortunate enough to be like on top of the boss when your weapon skill goes away they're gonna be dealing a lot of damage to you also this is kind of a recipe for uh, failure basically it's just an easy way to die so try and avoid that if you can as always thank you guys so much if this video guide helped at all let me know down below and like and subscribe as possible and as always thank you so much and I will see you on the next one